Hi okay, folks, so here's the second coordinate geometry video. Um, let's just recap what we already know. We know how to find the equation between two points. Uh, let's say we had a fixed point P, which is uh, 3, 4, Q is 2, and uh, let's go Q for uh, 10 and 11. If we want to find it, well, we know we need it in the form y minus y1, m minus x1, where m is the gradient. And we have two points that we know, so we can go straight for our y2 take 1 over x2 take x1 formula, uh, i.e. the rate of change, uh, which represents m, which is the difference in y over the difference in x. So 11 minus 4 over 10 minus 3 is 7 over... Uh, 7, which is 1, and therefore our gradient is 1. We can write that our equation of the line then between P and Q would be Y minus, doesn't matter which one I could take, I could take P or Q, I'll take Q this time, uh, Y minus 11 equals our gradient uh, M, which is 1, all times by our X minus 10. Okay, and that would be the equation of the line, you wouldn't need to write that one in there. Right, we've also recapping from this question one here. And this one says, find the equation of the line L, which is parallel to y equals 2x minus 1, which passes through the point P31. So remember, you've got that line um, y equals 2x minus 1. There's the line. We want a parallel line through the point uh, P, which is 3 along and 1 up. Parallel line through here. Remember, parallel lines can't touch. They have the same gradient as your first line, um, but it's been moved over slightly across. Okay, So it's got the same rate of change, the same gradient. And therefore, we know that M1 is going to be the same as M2. So we know we're going to have Y minus equals M2, which is the same gradient. This is in the form Y equals MX plus C, where M is the gradient and C is the Y-intercept. Okay, And then X minus, and then we've got our X1, which is our known point 3, and our Y1, which is our known point 1. There we go, we found the line parallel uh, to L, which passes through the point P. Verify, number two, verify means validate, you know, make, make sure that uh, that is actually the case that it's saying. So verify that Q minus 4 minus 9 lies on L and find the midpoint between P and Q. Okay, so remember L's equation is Y equals 2X take 1. So how do I know that Q lies on that line? Well, if I want to verify, then when X equals minus 4, which is Q's X value, I should get minus 9 in this equation if Q actually lies on L. So therefore, Y equals 2 lots of Q's X value minus 4 minus 1, which equals minus 9, therefore Q on L, as we hoped. It then says, find the midpoint between P and Q. Hmm. How do you find the midpoint between two points? Well, let's draw that line again. 2x take 1. Here's P, which is uh, 3 and 1. And here's Q, which is... Uh, ah, Q's actually down the bottom at minus 4 and 9. Let's change that. So here's our line. Q is here. Uh, minus 4, minus 9. And P is here, which is 3 and 1. The midpoint. How do you find the midpoint between these two points? Well, the midpoint has got to be somewhere around there, hasn't it? And let's think about it. The midpoint is... This is a bit long triangle, isn't it? Remember we said on a straight line, this is a long triangle between two points, P and Q. 
So the midpoint must be halfway along and halfway up, mustn't it? So therefore the midpoint must be the x coordinates plus together averaged out. It must be midway between them, right? So if you take that whole distance, which has to be 3 plus, and then you know that it's going to be 4 that way, and then divide it by 2, you're left with your midpoint. And also here, what's the midpoint? And remember, this is in a coordinate system. So our y value is 1 here, plus our minus 9 all over 2, which gives you minus 8. So the midpoint must be minus 1 over 2 and minus 8 over 2, which is minus 4. Okay, so the midpoint is halfway along and halfway up between two points. So you could describe the midpoint, capital M, as x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. So i.e. the average uh, of the two points, x's and y's. Okay. Next then it's saying find the distance of PQ. Now, yeah, let's draw that again. Here is Q, minus 4, minus 9, and here's P, which is 3 and 1. Just check that. And it is 3 and 1, yep. How do we find the distance between those two things? Well, like I said before, this is a big triangle, isn't it? This is a big triangle, a right angle triangle where the gradient or rate of change is the same. So therefore, the distance between these two things, we should be able to use Pythagoras here, because we know this x distance. We know this x distance. If there's your axis system, so here's 3, here's minus 9. So if this is your, y, uh, your x axis, and this is your y axis, Okay, you know that this distance is 1 away plus, and this distance is 4, so this is total distance 5. The y distance, you can see, is 1 above and uh, 9 down, so total distance is 10. And therefore, through Pythagoras, you can say the distance PQ, so the magnitude of PQ, must be the square root of 5 squared plus 10 squared through Pythagoras because here's your x kind of distance, here's your y kind of distance, and here's your distance of the hypotenuse, which is what you're trying to find. And you know through Pythagoras that z squared is x squared plus y squared. So therefore, a distance, which must always be positive, must be square root x squared plus y squared. What is x squared plus y squared? Well, it's literally what we've said, isn't it? It's <coughs> so any distance between points must be the same as the square root of, or let's think about how we got this 5. This 5, we did our x2 value, which is our p value, could be x1, it literally doesn't matter as long as you're consistent which way you go round our x2 value minus our x1 value, wasn't it? We did 1 minus minus 5, which gave us a distance of 4 squared. That's that distance there. And now we've got to describe this distance here. Remember, this is y2 and this is y1. So that distance is y2 subtract y1 squared. And there we have our distance between two points, there's your kind of formula, but you can just see it's using Pythagoras. And let's follow on then from last, uh, the last video where it said we had that property, and that property of being perpendicular was that if m1 times m2 equals minus 1, two lines 
are perpendicular to each other, it kind of shows you, you know, a bit of a by eye why that works. But you could prove you could prove that those two gradients, so i.e. m1, m2 rather, or m1 or m2 doesn't matter. But let's say m2 was minus one over m1, right? For grade uh, for perpendicular gradients. Okay. You can prove that's the case. Now you know your distance formula. Off the previous video I've just said. You knew you had two points. Okay, you had that that thing was 3.5. You had that that point was 1 and 2. Okay. You could find the distance between that point and that point. You also had another point Q here which was 5 and 7, you could find the distance between these two points and these two points, and the distance between Q and this point here, remember this has a Y coordinate of 0, as it's on the axes. 3.5 and 0. You can find the distance between this point this point and this point, this point and this point, and this point and this point, and they would follow Pythagoras' theorem. And that's how, that's one way, quite a long-winded way of how you could prove it, but you could also prove it using vectors uh, and the dot product, but that's kind of, that's not something you're going to learn until second year, okay? Right, finally then, so prove that the lines y plus 5 equals 2x and 2y minus 14 plus x equals 0 are perpendicular, well, we need to get our gradients to be comparable, don't we? So equation 1, equation 2 are labeled. Equation 1, why don't, let's get it in y equals mx plus c form. So y equals 2x minus 5, that's now in y equals m1x plus c form. We know the gradient is 2. Question, uh, equation 2, it's got a bit of rearranging to do, hasn't it? We need to get y equals, so it's comparable, we need it y equals mx plus c. So first, I need to get rid of that 14 and that x. So bring it all over to the right. So 2y equals minus x plus 14. So therefore, divide everything by 2. That's minus a half x plus 7. So you can see here that this gradient, m2, must be minus a half. And you can see that this gradient, m1, is 2. If they're perpendicular, m1 times m2 must equal minus 1. Well, m1 is 2, m2 is minus a half, which does equal minus 1, and therefore the lines are perpendicular. And that's that.